both Uber and Lyft CEOs came out and said that they're not sure about the driver supply as this pandemic winds down and ridership goes up. So let's talk about that on today's video. Hey everyone, my name is Chris and this is the Rideshare Guy. And today we're going to be talking about what both Uber and Lyft CEOs have said about driver supply and demand when it comes to what they're looking forward in the near future, which is about six months or so out. So it could be quarter two, it could be quarter three when it comes to this whole recovery. And what is this gonna mean for drivers? So we're gonna look at exactly what Logan and Dara had said in the transcript. Then we're gonna go on to Twitter and look at a couple of things on Twitter, which is kind of funny. And then let's talk about what it could mean for drivers in the near future. First, let's look at what Dara said in the transcript. And you can find this right on The Motley Fool when it comes to the transcript. You just do a simple Google search, type in Uber Q4 2020, and it will pop up if you'd like to read the entire thing. We're just going to take out two parts of it where he's talking about the supply and the demand and worried about what going to happen with drivers coming back or not and what they could possibly do for it. So the first part, the first quote is the recovery in these markets demonstrate consumers pent up desires to start moving again while Uber is continuing to gain share versus other modes of transportation. Over the next six months, we'll begin to prepare our business to go from preservation mode to reposition. This means investing in new mobility products such as either reserve rentals, transit, taxis, and motorbikes, and rolling out to new segmented offerings like Uber Comfort. We will focus on re-engaging riders for their second, first trips, and re-engaging drivers to meet ramping demand. So right there, you're probably going to see a new marketing ploy of trying to get riders to return by saying your second first trip and then they're going to try to re-engage drivers. And then a little bit later on the call or in the transcript, depending on where you're looking, it goes on and says, I do think that I'm worried about one thing going into the second half of the year is, are we going to have enough drivers to meet the demand that we're going to have in the mobility segment? But I think this team has proven himself over and over again. And as the mobility business comes back, we will look to continue to fund some of the new use cases, calibles, transit, etc. But frankly, we've been doing that anyway because those kind of long-term bets are bets that we should be pushing doing during good times or bad times. And now over to what Lyft's CEO had said about the same thing when it comes to not thinking that they're going to have enough drivers that are going to meet the demands coming from ridership as things progress and get out of the pandemic. And it says... Yeah, I'll jump in with that a little bit more color. Just to what Brian was talking about, our top priority is navigating the recovery. And one of the biggest challenges in rideshare is creating marketplace balance, making sure you have enough drivers for every rider, and the two respond on very different timelines. So supply and bringing more drivers onto the system takes time. It's a little more like steering, turning the Titanic, whereas demand can move much faster. And that's the real challenge. We don't know when the demand will come back. And so we need to invest a little bit ahead of the curve. We expect to see some of that demand pick up in Q2. And we could be wrong, but we'd rather prepare for that if not. Now, what this means for drivers is that you're probably going to see heavy marketing campaigns to come back, whether it's through emails, whether it's through online advertising or on TV advertising or whatever it might be, maybe even on the channel. But either way, you're probably going to see them trying to get drivers back and entice them. It could be with maybe new types of sign-on bonuses or comeback bonuses. That could be an option. And it also could come in the form of having different promotions and things like that when you're out on the road to try to get drivers to come back or even sign up if they haven't driven already. Now let's look at a tweet that Dave Lee made about what Uber and Lyft CEOs said about the supply of drivers. And then let's see what some people are saying in the comments itself because it's actually 
kind of spot on, gives you different thought processes, and maybe it's something that Uber and Lyft should be looking at. But it says on the original tweet, both Uber and Lyft CEOs expressing concern this week that there might be too few drivers to meet rideshare demand if and when things pick up this year. Then going on to a couple of the responses, it says, wonder what would happen if they paid more. <laughs> uh, lose customers. And then it says, I thought an efficient market would find a solution. We got a couple of good gifs. <laughs> gifs. I'm not quite sure. But then it says, like, if they paid reasonable rates that didn't equate to working for nothing when taking all expenses into account, possibilities are endless. When the minimum wage is finally raised to lessen the starvation, I'll bet that'll siphon off more drivers. Perhaps they could try paying their drivers a decent rate relevant to both the value and risk of the service they provide. And we'll just go one more. Uh, it, we'll just use this one. Left something out. Both Uber and Lyft's CEO expressing concern this week that there might be too few drivers at the current rate we pay them, but which we could change to meet rideshare demand if and when things pick up this year. So that is actually pretty clever right there and pretty much true, because like I said, this could be something where they might try to raise rates, they might try to increase promotions, or maybe even have like a comeback or sign-on bonus that they could try to do. So you're going to see a lot more happening probably in Q2, uh, which is going to be after the March time frame. And maybe we'll get a little bit more information and be able to pass that on to you. So that was one quick highlight when it came to what both Lyft and Uber were saying, where they thought that the driver comeback would be a little bit harder to do and what they might actually try to plan on doing. We will find out hopefully soon at least in the second quarter, maybe going into the third. But it looks like both Uber and Lyft are going to be looking over the next three to six months out and maybe reinvesting into drivers. So now let's hear from you. Are you a driver that took the time off? Will you be coming back? Are you going to see if they're going to entice you some way, somehow? Or are you done with Uber and Lyft driving? Let us know. And then also, what do you think they should be doing if they want to get and pick up demand? Do you think just rates should rise just period? Do you think that it's able to get drivers to make more money, more weekly promotions, maybe a secondary sign-on bonus or comeback bonus? Comment below and let us all know. Now, if there's any updates to this when it comes to what they might be doing to entice drivers, we will make an update video, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you'll be notified every time a new video is uploaded because there's new ones every single week that will help you earn more money, strategize, and just know what's going on in the Uber, Lyft, and gig world. All right, everyone, drive safe.